go out when you started? Did you have a sponsor? Did you know you were going to write a book? We we didn't expect to write a book. We expected to do this when we began in 2013 as probably a couple of month project just to be able to go half a dozen places, and we, we convinced um, our editors at the Atlantic that if the magazine would pay the gasoline and motel cost for doing this for a couple of months, then we would do stories for the magazine. And then as we started to think, gee, there's more here, we began, and this is just to give nuts and bolts information, we we worked up with various of, of, of advertisers in the Atlantic saying, if you will underwrite the just kind of flat out travel costs for the next six months, then we'll have your ads next to the reports we're doing from the Midwest. And, and so we had a series of just those, those advertisers. So it ended up being the normal advertising model of journalism where they didn't know what we were going to say. They had no influence whatsoever on what we wrote or where exactly we went. But we, they just were said they were saying, this is a face of America we'd like people to know more about. So we had just a number of the, the Atlantic's normal advertisers say that they would uh, take a couple months sponsorship for what we were doing. And it, it was kind of surprisingly inexpensive to do this, not like what you might think, partly because when you when you're in small towns, one of the great advantages of people living there is housing is not expensive, for example. That that makes a difference to a lot of people. And that also kind of filters down to motels are not expensive. In fact, sometimes we were lucky to find one, and we did end up staying with, with people in their houses sometimes. Um, and same thing with rental cars. Sometimes we just borrowed the cars. Um, and and drove around to the extent that we did, but it it um, it made for a real on the ground a real life person experience rather than than sheltered. It, it was a scramble, um, but in a good way. That's really how you find out what what is happening when you scramble around rather than have a lot of handlers or um, kind of a, a, a different experience in the town from the way people are living. I think so. And that direct access gave you guys a an, an really good end product. You really got insider information because you were there with the insiders. If you had been, you know, I don't know, wined and dined and tour guided, <laughs> you wouldn't... You wouldn't have gotten the same kind of information. You might have gotten the press kit information, but don't know that you would have gotten the real information that you came away with. And, you know, it's it's true when you're visiting a place, we usually would be in the towns we wrote about for about two weeks. And, of course, two weeks is not like spending two years there or a lifetime, but it's more than just coming in for a day and going to a diner and having a sort of prearranged set of interviews. And we were able to, we had the luxury of being surprised by things. You know, we'd talk to somebody in a newspaper office and he or she would say, oh, you really need to go see this company or this artist or this retailer or this inventor. And we'd go, to, go in directions we hadn't expected when we were planning to go there. And that, that was the real payoff. And it was, it was surprisingly interesting easy to do this because people just love to talk about their hometowns. So if you start out the conversation, not with some, you know, political question like, well, who'd you vote for in the last election? Or what do you think of what's coming up? But rather start out with, so tell us what's going on in this town. You know, what's important to you? What are, what are the interesting issues or point us to an interesting school? Or if you go to the library and ask the librarian, so what are the questions people come in asking you about here in the library? Then you get to in easily and quickly into the daily lives of the people. And, they, and um, it's a very humbling experience, actually, to, to listen, to have people open up and talk about their lives and, and what they're doing and what's important to them, and then, then to try to be um, an honest scribe of what they're saying. Absolutely. I think it's so cool. I know if you went to the library here, the librarians know quite a bit about what's going on. And uh, you would get some really good information. 
Jen, you should talk about libraries and just how, how central they were in what oh, you were doing. It, I think that was one of the early surprises, is, uh, was finding as we went into towns, it, it became a first stop because the libraries are, are so much more than books and research now. They're, they're social centers and civic centers and, and technology centers. They're the place where a lot of people can get a broadband connection that they might not otherwise have which is a lot of people, especially in the rural parts of the country. And they're, they're places that are open to everybody. So you, you end up seeing the slices of life that you would not normally run into from, uh, from the people who are homeless, and you'll always find them in libraries, to um, young people who are entrepreneurs and going there because it's kind of the modern day equivalent of the Silicon Valley garage where, you know, Steve Jobs started. Um, or you'll find maker spaces where people are coming in to do everything from learn how to sew to um, print out some prototype on a 3D printer of a little piece they need for something they're inventing. So it's, it, and the ethic and mission of, of public libraries now today are, are just all about that, serving the needs and wants of the communities, um, which is, is t makes them into one of the most fundamental and critical public institutions that, that keep town going. Absolutely. And ours is the same way. We have a wonderful library system, and they are so supportive of the entire community. Um, I don't know what many, many, many people, as you say, would do if they didn't have the library. I mean, we've got one library in our town that is situated in a certain neighborhood, and after school, if you go to that library, you will see tables and tables and tables full of people that just came from school with their book bags. They've got their stuff out. The librarians go around and check on them and help them and point them to resources, to getting their homework done. And they're all pretty cooperative and pretty quiet. And they're digging in and they're, they're really learning and working at learning. And it's really fun just to go and see them because it's like, oh, I had no idea. It's like right. after school study centers surrounded by books and technology that many of those young people would not have at home. And so it's it's really, really nice. And so, that is so, so interesting and heartening to hear because things like that which you see so vividly in Miami, we've seen other places too. And it just gave us, you know, a kind of excitement of just, of telling the story you've just told and saying, yes, it's like that in Columbus, Ohio. And yes, it's like that in Bend, Oregon. And having people become aware of how many places this is happening. It's absolutely like that in libraries all over. And um, one of my friends from, oh, ages and ages ago, his wife is a retired librarian. And to hear her stories of how hard they worked to make the library stay vibrant and productive and a contributing factor to the community, it's, it's an absolute testimony to those people that are librarians and how hard they're working. So I just, I'm just like so thrilled that that was one of the things that you guys found was wonderful all over. Now, yeah. in the last couple minutes we have here, why don't you tell people how they can get this book? Because I was kind of purposeful about not spilling the beans too much of all the good things that they were reading this book because I want them to experience it for themselves. I want them to curl up with, you know, a cup of tea or, or something and really enjoy what it took you guys a hundred thousand miles in a tiny little plane to produce. So tell everybody how they can get a hold of this book. So, so that, that is so, so gracious of you. So our sense is the first choice is always a local independent bookstore, which are central parts of the community. So, so if you have a favorite local independent bookstore, we're certainly going to be at the Miami book festival, which we're really looking forward to. 
There's IndieBound.org online, and there are other retailers online. And Deb, you can also talk about the way in which our message will be conveyed next year. Oh, yes. We are, um, as they say, in production right now with HBO to do a documentary that's based on the book. We're going back to about half a dozen of the towns um, to do tapings, which is a really interesting and different kind of experience. So um, I, I hope everybody has a chance to see that in, a, in about a year or so when it's out. Oh, that will be awesome. But um, And if people want to visit the Book Fair website, it's www.miamibookbear.com. And the book is Our Towns by James Fellows and Deborah Fellows. And it is a national bestseller. You can order it from your local bookstore. Um, I'm sure you can order it online, too. But... I like people to shop local. I'm a big advocate of that. So try everyone to shop local. The neighbor you support might be yours. Uh, <laughs> I'm serious. And, Very well put. <laughs> and then your neighbor will support you back. <laughs> and that, my friends, is community, which is sort of what you guys all discovered in our towns. It has been so nice to have you here. Is there any last minute, last second little thing you want to tell people? Deb is always the one who does oh, the big gosh. close. Go um, ahead, Deb. Oh, my goodness. Jim, you're really putting me on the spot I here. am. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think maybe the last thought I'd have here is that leadership in the communities that we found comes from the most surprising places. It doesn't necessarily have to be the school superintendent or the mayor, although they are great, too, and do these, too. Sometimes it's it's a, a musician who pops up or a teacher at the school or or a mom who has an idea for some um, new thing going on at the kids' schools. And, and we saw that people really felt the power and the agency to work in their hometowns and, and get the kind of cooperation that you're talking about. So it was, it, it was a it is still being a terrific experience that we're happy to share with people and, and hope others get out of town and go to other towns and, and find the same thing that we found. Thanks, Rhonda. <laughs> I hope so, too. It certainly made me want to go visit a few places. So it's been very nice to have you on today. Thank you for being here. And again, everybody, the book is called Our Towns. And you know what I am going to say before I leave you? I always say this. Be grateful, and you will attract good things. And until next time, I'm Rhonda Cobb, The Money Coach. <laughs>